ain't this fucking great? Uh, before we get started on our 55 Buick situation we got here with our brakes, I'd like to take a minute and explain something to everybody out there. And what I'd like to explain is a situation that says, This is my fucking shop! Does that even make sense to anybody out there? That this is my fucking place? I don't even know if it does. Because as we are looking here, I see all this shit. Okay, here's a bunch of chrome. Here's some fucking polish. We got these dirty fucking rags in the way. We got some uh, DXR 330. What the fuck is going on? You know? I'm going to tell you what's going on. We got uh, Mr. Picky Guy Norm over here putting his car back together. And can't clean his fucking messes up. I'm going to have a talk with Norm, get that shit straightened out real fucking quick. Welcome to... DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. Okay, now that we got it cleaned up and half-ass going our route, uh, you know, swinging our fucking way, let's see if we can get this fucking master cylinder going. Um, now, I'd like to say I went over to uh, Daryl's uh, up at the chicken coop. I used his parts washer and I cleaned the master cylinder out. Alright, so we got that all nice and clean. Let me get this lid off of here. Uh, we did run into a problem with our lid. Um, it's a little bit corroded, so I don't know if we're going to be able to use it or not. I'm going to try to look for another one. Hopefully I'll find one. If not, we're going to have to stick with what we got. But, other than that, um, we got the master cylinder all cleaned out. Looking fucking good. And uh, we also found out, if we look down inside there, you can see it's pretty shiny. That means that it's had a sleeve put in it. Uh, this has been bored out and a sleeve has been installed. You can see it right there. Yeah. You see what I'm talking about right there? Uh, yeah, there's a sleeve in it. So this master cylinder has been rebuilt before. Uh, I went ahead and got a kit online. And that kit that we're looking at right here, this uh, rebuild kit for this master cylinder was $15 free shipping. So remember that next time you go to do this. Now before we rebuild it, uh, I want to go ahead and try to clean some of this stuff up, like our plunger. Um, this is our push rod, uh, pedal rod, that goes to the master cylinder. And then, of course, you got this plunger, so it's a plunger slash push rod tube. And it's also got this rubber boot on it. Uh, we have a brand new rubber boot in our kit, but there's really nothing wrong with this rubber boot, so I'm probably going to keep that rubber boot. And then, of course, all these pieces right here, uh, this is our, our lid. And I didn't see a copper washer in there, so we'll probably keep that. Now, this rubber washer was in there, and then, of course, all these pieces were in there, and we'll be replacing all those. All right, before we go messing with that, let's go ahead and get some rubber gloves on. You know how chemicals are um, when working with them. It's better to be protected than not protected. So, now that we got our uh, master cylinder all cleaned out and ready to roll, um, we've got to put this thing back together. So... Here's the parts that I took off of it, and the way that I take stuff off, and I kind of fucked up, is I usually take things off and then I put them in order, which I didn't really fuck up. Alright, you know who fucked me up is our buddy Norm, because what Norm did, he came in here and moved all our shit like that, and then used my fucking table. Alright? And fucked me up in the ass! So, when I took the master cylinder out, it had one of these on it. And I see in our kit, it came with a brand new one, which is great. And you can see that right here. Here's the old one. Alright, so we won't be using that. And it also had this real thick gasket. And I'm going to get that out and show it to you right here. Alright, some kind of cork gasket that was for our lid. 
uh, where is our fucking lid? Where did it go? Here it is right here. And this is our main problem that we're having right now. If you look at those threads, they're kind of fucked. And when I put that on here to screw it on, you can see that it's only going to catch a couple threads when I tighten it. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to do something with that and make it work. I don't know. When I took it off, it was very loose and very uh, old. But uh, we'll figure something out. We'll go ahead and get this lubed up here. You don't want to use anything on your master cylinder when rebuilding it except for denatured alcohol or uh, carburetor cleaner, okay? Don't use anything else, no WD-40, no silicone, no nothing, all right? We don't want to contaminate our brake fluid. We don't want to fuck up our situation. We just want to go down the line and get her done. So here's our old spring. There's our new spring right there. Here's our old plunger head. Here's our new plunger head. We'll go ahead and set that on there. That's complete. All right, we got that complete. We'll set that right there. Here's our new plunger. Here's our old plunger. The new plunger goes in this direction here. This is how it goes, just like that. It does not go on top of there. All right, remember that. It sits on the top of this little, uh, this little thing right here. We're gonna call it a thing. That's a thing. complete we're gonna set that right there just like that uh, what else did we have that was brand new we got our plunger all right here's our brand new plunger that goes inside the cylinder this is our piston okay here's our old piston right here you can see how nasty and shitty that is and and is no good do you see the difference all right there you go looky here do you see what we're talking about um, the concaved area always faces toward your rod, all right? Your rod is gonna fit in there just like that. All right, let me show you what that looks like. Do you see how it's designed and made for that? The rod fits in there. Um, here's our O-ring that we were looking for. Remember that? That washer that was on this piece right here that we haven't cleaned yet? Let me clean that, I'll be right back. Okay, we just cleaned our cap off and it came out pretty nice, I'm happy with it. Got to get all of that grime and rusty moisture water out of there. And it looks like it's gonna work. So we'll take our new rubber gasket. We're gonna slide that on here, just like that, making sure that it seats very nicely. All right. And then I noticed in our new kit, it did not come with a new copper washer. So if you have that copper washer, do not lose it. And it is now time to go ahead and put our uh, master cylinder back together. This is the tricky part if you didn't pay attention. Now, here's our brand new rubber boot, but I'm not gonna use that because to actually put that on, we got to take it apart here, and if I take that apart, then it's gonna kinda fuck us up on our setting um, here, and uh, we'll have to readjust all that, and we'll have to count threads and all this other shit, so. I'm gonna go ahead and use the same rubber boot that I got. I'm just gonna get it out of the way for now, just like that. Hold on a minute, okay. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and put this thing all together. So we know that this is going on this, okay? We know that for a fact. So that means that this actually goes in here like this, but we don't wanna put it in that way. That's not how we wanna put it in. I'm gonna show you why is because if you look at the way this thing's built right here, if you put it in going down, it's gonna flip these up and they're gonna break it. So we wanna slide it in this way. Now they actually make some uh, brake fluid, uh, I mean a master brake uh, lithium type grease that you can use on it, um, but I don't have any of that. So we're gonna have to rely on this right here and we're gonna push that in there just like that, okay? 
And then if you look right here, you can see that our cylinder is now installed. So once that's installed, now we can go ahead and put our push rod on. And this is where it gets kind of tricky because once this is in there, uh, this is the washer that holds this down and remember that ring that spring I was telling you about this thing here that actually goes around here you see what I'm saying that goes right there like that to hold it down so we're gonna set that right there like that and I hope you can see what's going on here because uh, I'm doing the best I can do to show you what the fuck's going on being a one-person guy that I am right now and if you have another set of hands, maybe Mama in the kitchen there watching her soap operas, tell her to get off her ass and come outside and hold this for you. Uh, it's always good to have Mama involved. And if she doesn't want to get involved, tell her you ain't getting no ride. Because nobody rides for free. Okay. Uh, I got our clip installed. And I'm going to be honest with you. I get this on here I'll tell you how honest I am uh, I had to use the old one it seems like this one here didn't have the correct diameter and shape and form to actually fit in there so I went ahead and put the old one back on um, what do you expect made in fucking Taiwan go figure I guarantee you the company that owns this place is probably right here in America and they get everything made in China. That's what it says here, made in China. All right? They have their shit made in China, and then they ship it over here tax-free, and they're making fucking a bundle of cash. So, yeah, there's your free fucking trade, right? Cheap fucking shit that doesn't even fucking work. But guess what? Made in the USA. That's where we're at. All right. So now that I got my plunger in there, I'm going to go ahead and push that down, and then I'll put my boot back on that boot back on there without breaking it all right here we go uh, the boot so our piston is now installed into our master cylinder the next thing we're going to do is going to go ahead and install our spring setup very simple very easy all right remember that piece that we set in the end of our spring here this is going to be where our uh yeah this thing here is going to ride right there just like that all right that's the foot for this okay and then always make sure that um, the plunger end right here is facing up the cup okay uh, you can see right here let me show you just to be verify that you can see how that was on here okay you can see the imprint of it that it was sitting in here like that so we're gonna go ahead and hit this with some brake fluid spray a little more brake fluid in there and kinda lube it up a little bit and now we got that stuck in there, you fucking bitch. And I actually, I actually did this wrong. Um, remember I was telling you about putting that cylinder in the wrong way? Well, what I should have done is I should have slid this in there first and then the cylinder, but that wouldn't have worked. That wouldn't have worked. So one of them has to go in the wrong way. So it's going to have to be this piece of rubber here. There we go, just like that. And then, of course, this goes in just like this. And we've gotten a problem here. This isn't fitting in there. And it's not that. It's the rubber. There we go. Okay. Okay, so that's in there. Then this goes down here. Let's go ahead and pull our rod out so we got full uh, play to get our spring on. And then once our spring is installed, we're going to take this right here with our copper washer. We're going to take this big nut. And then we're going to go ahead and put that on here. And then all i got to do now is tighten that bitch up. Um, and I believe we now have, the only thing that I'm really not fucking sure of is this lid. I'm going to try to find me a master cylinder lid somewhere that's not rotted. Uh, I believe it will work. I really do believe it will. Because uh, I just think it will. But the problem I have is that... Um, there's only like one or two threads holding that, and there's no seal around this edge. Uh, so, yeah, wish me luck on that, right? Let's hope I don't have to buy a whole fucking master cylinder for a fucking lid. 
Okay, so if you're like me and you don't have the right size socket, we always got a crescent wrench because that fits pretty much any size. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that crescent wrench and we're going to tighten that baby down. Uh, we don't want that thing to leak. There's going to be a lot of pressure on that. We'll go ahead and hit that with our hammer. And then hopefully that's going to be on there tight enough where it won't leak. Always make sure and remember to use your copper gasket. Very, very important. Okay. The last and final thing that I'm going to do to this thing is I'm going to take a little bit of brake fluid. Before I do that, I want to put that in here, just like this. Let's get it right here. And I'm going to take just a little bit of brake fluid. I'm going to pour it in here, just enough to uh, fill up our cylinder. And then I'm going to go ahead and pump that. And I can tell that that cylinder is brand new. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try. What I'm trying to do here is bleed the fucking line and get some lubrication in there. So as this thing is sitting around, we don't have to worry about it uh, locking up or freezing up on us while we're waiting on um, uh, yeah, doing the rest of the work we got to do because this will probably be the last thing that we put back in the car. I don't know what the fuck the problem is. Okay, uh, yeah, we went ahead and took it apart. It wasn't pumping fluid like it was supposed to, and I think I figured out what the problem was, is we had our spring mechanism backwards. Uh, the bell that has all the little holes in it actually um, faces out, so the fluid will travel through that and into the brake lines. Um, I noticed that putting it this way here, it's very hard for that little hole right there to line up perfect with that little hole. So uh, yeah, that's got to be our problem because as I took the old one um, and I kind of lined it up, it looks like uh, that was actually like that, okay? And that's what the fucking problem was. So let's go ahead and put this back on here um, just like that. And then we'll try to bleed it out one more time. And I think ah, we're going to be okay. So I'm going to go ahead and bleed it slowly. And it should start pumping. Well, um, I took my master cylinder and I actually put it away. Uh, this is about approximately a week later. Uh, I was frustrated. I was pissed off. I was mad. And I was upset. Now... We already know that I had everything laid out perfect right here on this table and I had it broken down into piece by piece which way it goes and then we had a disruption of um, somebody coming in and pushing everything away. That's right, they pushed it all into a pile and then decided to start working on their stuff and basically fucked up the uh, position of the way everything went. So I went ahead and decided you know, fuck it. Let me go ahead and ponder over it. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and think about it and see where the hell I'm fucking up at. So what I did is I contemplated and I figured it out. And what we did is we actually um, uh, fucked it up when we put it all back together. And I am going to go ahead and try to get this thing taken apart again so we can get it together the right way. Okay, how y'all doing out there? This is Pete over at SWRC. Now, we're in the middle of making this video on this master cylinder for the Buick uh, station wagon, which is a very simple, easy job. It's a one-line master cylinder. It's not a dual chamber. It's nothing but a master cylinder. And um, this is actually several months later. I have really gotten far on the Buick. We don't want to go look at it because I'd rather you watch the videos as they're progressing to see the Buick in action, but it's really turning out to be an awesome car. But what the real deal is, is the situation is, is that I'm showing you all this stuff in this video because I really don't need to do that. I could just get to the point, show you how to rebuild it and be down the road. But what the real deal is, is that I like to show my mistakes to you, the viewer, to let you know 
that you're not the only one that makes mistakes and when you see these reality TV shows and all this mumbo jumbo jargon of these professionals on the shop on the internet of shops on the internet um, you will always keep in your mind that they fuck it up just like you and me fuck up and nobody is perfect so now that that's out let's get back to the video because I think this is where I actually show you how to do it the right way now where we messed up the first time is when we took our spring okay the spring that came in the kit was way too long it was not the right uh, length it was a lot longer and the pedal had too much pressure when we were pushing on it and it was binding up so I went ahead and used the old spring in there but what happened is I had the spring upside down if you noticed when you were watching the video there was one end that had perforated holes there was another end that had a very small hole the other problem is is I'm getting ahead of the fucking game here let's watch the rest of the video and I think I'll answer all your questions what the real problem was though is I had all the parts were upside down inside out all because of nitpick Norm and his bullshit roadrunner that's taking up my fucking shop when I can be working on something else and he's using my shop for a hobby shop and and basically uh, coming into my environment and fucking up my world but that's how it is when you're the nice guy and everybody's your friend let's get back to the video when you're doing something like this and I'm sure that everybody in the world will agree uh, that uh, when you're trying to get something right it's better to do it when you're all by yourself and nobody's around kind of like right now um, we had uh, several people telling us what to do on it and and we had several people telling us that this was no good and it's not gonna work and we also had several people that were uh, telling us that um, uh, we were fucking up. So what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and take the cap off one more time. All right, because at first we thought that okay, that's not going to work. So we're going to go ahead and stick it in here like this. Because one way or the other, we're going to get this motherfucker to work. So I'm going to go ahead and take my cap off, just like this. Making sure not to lose the copper washer. And then when I take my uh, spring out, all right, um, we notice that this is upside down. This has got to be upside down. And I'm going to go ahead and take my plunger and plunge it because I believe that uh, we got our, uh, the rest of our operation here is actually upside down. So now to really make sure that this is all working properly, um, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take the whole thing apart and uh, basically, yeah, pull it apart. So basically what it uh, boils down to is we got a couple parts that are in backwards. And if it's possible, I can get this back out. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get everything in here the right way. And then I'm going to take this screwdriver and lightly push on that without ruining it. Because we have a situation here that's not looking pretty. And the situation is, is it's a fucked up deal. Oh, motherfucker, I almost got my fucking finger stuck in there. It just can't be that hard to rebuild one of these. It just can't fucking be. So what I'm thinking is uh, I want to get some brake cleaner and clean this out one more time and uh, see if we can go ahead and do that because working on these things is a real fucking mess especially when you're working with brake fluid brake fluid is not fucking good but, you know if I would have just been left alone and nobody fucking with me I think it would have all went together fine so I'm going to take all my parts and set them over here just like that 
and then we'll go ahead and get our brake cleaner out. We'll go ahead and get this thing cleaned up. And I'm still not convinced that this spring here is going to uh, replace this spring here. I I'm convinced that this is way too big and it's putting too much pressure on our master cylinder when we're actually trying to use it. So I think I'm going to go ahead and stick with the original one. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece off if possible. All right, our little basket. And we're going to try to replace it with this one here if we can. And then that way, at least we'll have the new basket on there um, instead of the old rusty one, just like that. Alright, so now we're ready to go ahead and actually put it together the right way. Uh, let me go ahead and stress one more time, the hand's doing the talking now, is that when it comes to this type of stuff, um, I'm glad that I showed you my fuck-ups. I could have went ahead and cut and spliced and diced this little video and made it look like, you know, uh, I did it real quicky quacky quack, you know, real uh, handy dandy, let's get her done, uh, I'm a badass mechanic, but I'm not that way, okay? I'm not that fucking way, because if I make mistakes, I'm showing you how you can make a mistake just as easy. So, this is what the problem was. We got this plunger here, if you look at it, you can see which way it goes by, uh, the, uh, the way that the rubber is pointing, so it would plunge this way like this. All right, and then what we had, we had this one was facing like this. All right, so we had each plunger looking at us in a different way. Um, this is the way that the plunger should go on, just like that. All right, and when we get this all together, I'm going to show you that it should all work out fine. Now, another thing that we had a problem with is this thing right here. Um, this plunger here. All right, looks a little bit different than that plunger, but I think that it'll work just fine. So basically the real problem was this little culprit right here. This was our problem. We had it facing backwards like this instead of facing the same direction as our other rubber. Once we get that together, this will fit in here like that, and then it'll all go in there. And that, my friend, right there is how the cylinder, spring, and plunger go in as one unit. So we'll go ahead and install everything just like so, being very careful not to uh, ruin or score anything and then this plunger here would go in next just like that and then of course our spring would go in after that just like that and then we'll go ahead and wait on our spring um, what we're going to do next is we will go ahead and put our uh, pedal uh, assembly back into the car um, I'm thinking that a lot of these parts that we're buying now these aftermarket parts a lot of these parts are universal and fit more than one application, you might say. Um, I'm thinking that this fits all GM products of this era and uh, it's a universal kit and that's why this situation is happening right there. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay, now that we got all that together, now we can go ahead and finish uh, building our cylinder. And we know we got the plunger in the right way this time. Um, so uh, this time, instead of putting the uh, screened part down, we're going to put face it up. And then we will put this end down, facing it into our uh, rubber plunger. And then we can go ahead and install our cap using our copper washer, which our brand new kit might say right here did not come with that copper washer and then we're going to go ahead and install our brand new rubber uh, gasket slash o-ring 
and that will sit right on top of that and then it will all screw together just like this so our master cylinder is now built properly um, that was the only other way that that could even possibly go together is the way that I just did it and um, from here on out uh, we will go ahead and clean this up we'll put some brake fluid into the cylinder to moisturize it and to uh, prep it up for use but we are not going to go ahead and bleed it um, that is the way that it goes I know for a fact that's the only other way it can go make sure that both of your plungers are facing the same way and um, the little uh, baskets uh, the little aerated basket is facing toward your uh, feed line here so fluid can come through and that's basically it that is a rebuilt master cylinder that we have just completed um, taking a very long time to do it but the time has come to get her done let's go ahead and pour a little fluid in it and see if it'll plunge itself out we still have nothing Okay, there you go. That's all I'm going to do right there. You saw it. It's a bleeded situation. I don't want to get brake fluid everywhere. And we are fucking done with step one of uh, working on this Buick. All right, I still got to get a new lid. Um, you can see how rotted it is. This is aluminum, so the threads on that are shot. But the master cylinder is done. Um, we're not going to put it in yet because we are going to wait until after we find a new lid for it. All right, we gotta find a new lid. And then once we find a new lid, then we can clean our Blake lines out, replace all our wheel cylinders, and go down the fucking road. What a fucking nightmare. school. Classes don't stop till you know everything.